Please bow your heads in prayer with me. Lord, the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, thank you for singing that hymn, as that hymn will be used throughout the sermon today. So thank you for trying something new today and singing that beautiful hymn. The grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. My guess is that there were no Lutheran Board of Fellowships present at that pivotal point in the Gospel reading today, the feeding of the 5,000, because the disciples, the apostles, they didn't have enough food to go around, and a Lutheran Board of Fellowship would never have let that go. Lutherans were known for food. We love food. We love those spreads. Potlucks, celebration dinners, fellowship time in between the services. If there's food and there's Lutherans, they go together. Lutheran and food, they just go together like peas and carrots, peanut butter and jelly. Well, you get the picture. Lutherans know food. Lutherans and food are synonymous. But the Gospel reading today, though, isn't really about food. It's not about the feeding of the 5,000 with those five small loaves and those two little fish. The real issue at hand is in the statement that Jesus gives in response to the apostles wanting to send the crowds away, to have them fend for themselves, to have them go buy food on their own. Jesus turns to his apostles and says, you give them something to eat. The apostles realized what they faced was an impossible task. The crowds were gathered all around them, numbering 5,000 men, plus women and children. You're easily looking at 10,000 people there. The apostles realized this. And yet Jesus gave the apostles a directive to feed the crowds. It wasn't a demand to do, but a command to give. Let me clarify. Why were all the people there gathered, both the crowds and the apostles? What were the crowds really hungry for? What task had the apostles returned from at the beginning of the gospel reading for the day? They were all there because of Jesus. It was all about Jesus. He is the one who was giving the apostles rest. For come unto me, all you who are weary and weak, and I will give you rest. It's about Jesus. He is the one who feeds us with his word. I am the bread of life. It's what the crowds needed. All the parties involved in our gospel ring for today, they were in need in what Jesus alone could give himself. So what do we need in life? What do you hunger for in life? What are you chasing after in this life to fill you up? Is it your career? Are you engulfed with making sure that you are so successful that you have forgotten about the most important aspect of your life? Maybe it's about hobbies or special interests. Do they consume your time and money more and more and are becoming your own gods? What about relationships? Do you try to appease people in order to be filled with different connections, but in doing so you give up some of your own convictions? We tend to fill ourselves with those things so that they, they may bring us temporary satisfaction. But you and I, in the end, we will still be craving something more. So what will we chase after next? Will it be something else that over time it ultimately brings us and others around us hurt and heartache? Most likely. For you and I, they, we try to be full of busyness to fill us up, but in the end, all that we end up with is emptiness. Hungry? Why wait? Marketing slogan by Snickers. You know, I'm hungry, why wait? Seems like a good idea, so I'm not doing anything really, right? I am. They wanted to buy this. You wanted to buy, uh, have you buy this product to solve that hangering issue, that hungry and angry issue that you have. So they give you that feeling to temporarily subside down that hunger. So they want you to buy a candy bar to give you that temporary satisfaction. And even on some of the wrappers today on the back side, you see the word Snickers. It satisfies you. They want you to be full. But does a candy bar really fill you up? 
Are you truly satisfied from your hunger and that desire and yearn for more just by a simple candy bar? No. The feeding of the 5,000, it was not to be an event to settle a feeling or an emotion that had come over the crowds or the apostles. It was the moment where the divinity of Jesus showed what God had truly to give unto them, to feed and fill them all with spiritually. Hungry for what? The crowds were hungry for what Christ was giving. They needed, as Jesus recognized, the care that only a shepherd could give. This is why, like sheep, they followed that shepherd that they yearned to follow to the point in knowing where Jesus was going in the boat with his apostles and knowing where he was going, they went ahead to try to beat him there because they wanted to go where Jesus would be. Where did they end up? Mark's gospel account is the only one to give note that the crowds where the feeding of the 5,000 took place is there where there was green grass. The place where one of solitude and refreshment there in that desolate place, but it was not a desert wasteland. And this mirrors the sediments of the shepherd's psalm. Psalm 23, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Jesus also prepares a place for us to come and sit. As we learn at the feet of our Lord, we learn of his love here in this place. This sanctuary is that place where you come to know Jesus will be there for you in all times, in the good and the bad. He goes ahead of you to prepare a place for you, a place of heavenly dwelling. He goes ahead of you, preparing the way for you and giving you that forgiveness and that life that you and I so desperately need. For you come here this morning to once again hear of that mercy and grace that God has provided for you. It is here that you are fed with ordinary means, but in an extraordinary way, through the word and the sacraments of what God gives to his people. You are fed with what God gives to you. Here, the Good Shepherd, he cares for you with his divine power on display, showing you that there is more than enough mercy and grace to go around for you all, to fill you with, because he gives you everything in order to save you. You hear those words of his love. You read in his word the length, the breadth, the depth that he went to in order to save you from sin, from the devil, and from your own sinful selves. You hear that he even gave himself up on the cross to death on the cross to ensure that forgiveness and life are given to you. That's the best care that he had to give himself. And he gave all of himself up for you, for me, and for the whole world. The composer of the sermon hymn wrote, As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and they heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. We know Jesus gives us himself as he gave the crowds a glimpse into that divine nature. Showing off his power was more than sufficient to fill all of them of their needs. But what about the apostles? What did the apostles have to give to the crowds? Jesus gave them a charge before sending them out, as we read two weeks ago in our gospel reading, the beginning of chapter 6. Jesus gives those disciples, those apostles, specific instructions for the apostles were to take what with them? The apostles were to take nothing. That's right. You got it right. Thank you for being quiet. You got it right. Jesus tells them directly, take with you no bread, take you with you no money. Don't take anything with you. And here, here when they come back and meet up with Jesus, they come complaining to him, saying, feed the crowd, and Jesus says, you feed them. The apostles have to be going, has he lost it? First he tells us, don't bring any bread and any money, and now he's telling us that we should feed this crowd. Jesus, 200 denarii, half of a year's salary, would only give these people a bite of bread each, and you want us to feed them? And Jesus simply responds to them, you give them what they need. See, Jesus knew exactly what they needed. 
Jesus expected the apostles to know what they needed. He expected the apostles to feed the people that they encountered along the ways and in the various cities, and he expected the apostles to feed those crowds at that moment. But what a perplexing situation the apostles were in as they immediately began to think about worldly feeding, even though they had just returned from feeding people with that heavenly manna of God's very word. See, the crowds came, they followed Jesus, they wanted that shepherd because they wanted Christ in their life. They wanted the shepherd, they wanted the care, they wanted the nurture, they wanted the word of God to be proclaimed in their midst. The apostles had spent time with Jesus. They were prepared to give exactly what those people desired and yearned for, but they failed in recognizing man does not live by bread alone, but on the very word of God. And so often in our lives, the same is true. Now don't get me wrong, helping others in need of physical care is of great importance for us as Christians, but when the spiritual care of a person is neglected, how will they be filled with what they need most? That forgiveness and that life, that message of salvation has been won for them by Christ and him alone. We too are the apostles, both because we have the word, and yet we forget we have it. We have this message that has been given unto us, and we give it to others. This message of forgiveness, this message of life, this message of mercy and grace, this message of love. That Christ died for all. He rose for you and for me, and Christ lives. That is such a critical message that we have to share. And it's a message that is not about ourselves. It's about Christ and him alone. See, we have what people need to be fed with, with the word of God. But we get so caught up in the worldly ways that we lose sight of what we actually have been given to give to others so that they may be nourished and fed, not with things of this world, but with heavenly things, with the very word of God. We take not what we do as the focus of our faith. We show what we are given in Christ. We proclaim him and him crucified of that forgiveness and that life that we have in him and through that word and sacrament which he has given unto us. Jesus wanted his apostles to feed those people with the power from on high. So Jesus has to feed the 5,000, to show the crowds, to show the apostles what they have and what is needed most is the very word of God. There is where the power lies. Not that everyone's belly was full, but that the good shepherd cared for them enough. The good shepherd cares for you enough that he is sending you out to proclaim that message of forgiveness, of life, of mercy, and grace to all people in all places, in all instances. Hungry? You bet you are. You're hungry for the Word of God. Why wait? We don't. We don't have to because we have been fed with that very Word and we go and feed others with that very word. We give what the apostles had to satisfy those crowds, the blessings that God bestows upon us through the power of his word. The composer of the sermon hymn writes, You give yourself to us, O Lord. The selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. I recall of a time that a preacher had to address when one of his people complained to him about the sermon, was complaining about the time, complaining about how it just seemed to be so boring. I know that's never going to happen here. So, preacher then asked the gentleman, Sir, do you remember what you had for breakfast eight days ago? The guy thinks about it. He's like, well, I, I think I had, I had bacon and eggs. Yeah, bacon and eggs. Well, sir, do you remember what you had breakfast Two months, two weeks, and two days ago. Ah, uh, cereal? You remember what kind? Cereal in a box? But you know that two weeks, or two days ago you were fed. 
You know that two months, two weeks, two days ago, you were fed. And so is the same with the Word of God. When you hear it proclaimed in its truth and purity, when you hear it proclaimed unto you, you are fed. You are fed. And others need to hear that feeding of the Word of God for the nourishment of your souls. For God, God always has more than enough to satisfy us, more than any candy bar will ever satisfy us. He gives to us his very body and blood. He gives to us that nourishment that we so desperately crave and that he so freely gives. For through his word and through those sacraments, God nourishes us. He nourishes that faith in us so that we may go out in this world and proclaim him and him crucified, him risen, him lives. He lives. He lives. Thanks be to God. As we proclaim that power, it is not the power within us. It is the power of Christ that we proclaim. Thanks be to God that as we go and continue to live our lives in this world, we do not turn to the worldly ways that entice. We turn to the Word of God, which satisfies. Thanks be to God. We have all that we need in this body and life. We have the Word of God. Amen. Now the peace that passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in that Word as we are fed and nourished and as we go out to spread that Word to all those that we meet and that we talk to in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.